My name is Joel McGrillen and you're watching Our Belfast. Our Belfast, thank you very much um, for joining Ireland. us. Joel McGrillen, the Head of Tourism in Northern Ireland. Um, so we'll just get stuck in then straight away with the first question. Um, if you had one day left in Belfast, um, what would you do? Obviously, your job is Tourism Northern Ireland, but if I can pin you down into the city. If I had one day left in Belfast? One day, you were leaving, you were never coming back for whatever reason, what would you do? What do you like to do in the city? Well, if I had one day left, I'd probably prefer it was a Saturday. Right. Um, because I think the first thing I would do, I would get myself down to St George's Market in the morning, and mm -hmm. I would go and I would knock around the stalls and possibly do a bit of shopping. Mm -hmm. Um, have my breakfast there. Belfast Bab? Belf well, you know, we get a great choice of food. Down there, <laughs> <laughs> running down to Belfast Bab. There's, there's lots of stuff you can have. You would probably have to be an Ulster Fry of some shape yes. form. Yeah. So, yeah, and I think St George is one of the you know great assets of the city, mm -hmm. and just the whole vibrancy and the feel of the place at the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's it's a really pleasant experience. I think for for anyone. Absolutely. Um, Maybe filter across to into the shopping centre, pick one or two things up, and slip into Biddles for a couple of pints. Yes, <laughs> I would imagine. Um, how would I fill the afternoon? I mean, I've been to Titanic Belfast many times, but mm -hmm. I mean, if I were a visitor and I may only you know one day left, I mean, I mm -hmm. would certainly. I mean, I wouldn't be missing visit Belf or sorry, Titanic Belfast. I would. Yeah. I would really want to go to see that and explore that because that's such a you know, an iconic, new, iconic building of New Belfast. City Hall, if you can get a tour around the City Hall, I think it's interesting. A hop on a bus tour, mm -hmm. uh, go up to the Ulster Museum. You know, you've got such a choice of things to do. Yeah. Um, it's always know. good to have things inside in Belfast today, because it's, yeah. it's not often a sunny but, but, day. Well, <laughs> there, but there, there, are, there are lots of things you can do inside and out. Mm -hmm. um, bus, a bus tour, if you've got a nice sunny day, it's mm -hmm. on top of the bus, and you get a very compact, uh, story of the city and how the city's evolved over the last mm -hmm. sort of hundred plus years, or maybe a Belfast, you know, a, a black taxi tour. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry. You've got an inordinate number of choices of places to eat. You know, so you want, don't want to be picking out any specific restaurant as a word. You know, but there, I mean, there's at least ten restaurants here that you you could have a really as good a meal as you'll get in any other city in, in, mm -hmm. in, on these islands. Um, so if it was around this part of town, it'd be, you'd be probably going to like Dean's or you've got Ginger or you've got um, James Street South or, mm -hmm. or James, James Street as, it's, as, it's, as it is now. Um, or over at Cathedral Quarter, you've got a whole choice of places to go. I've got to say, Cobbley's probably my favourite restaurant over that neck mm -hmm. of And then you've got the choice of going to the Mac or you can go to the, you know, the Lyric or you can go to the, the Opera House or uh, if you want some entertainment for that evening, personally, I'd probably go to the Garrick and have a couple of pints. And I was going to get the plane, I'd <laughs> have a couple of pints in the Garrick and jump on a plane and then head off from there. So, obviously, I would say you've got a pretty good job for tourism though in Ireland and promoting it. We've got a really good product here in the city as well. It wasn't always always it wasn't always like that. Um, what are your early memories of Belfast and and the tourism industry back then? Well, my, I suppose my earliest memory of Belfast was, so I don't come from here, I'm from Ballina Hinch, but we had cousins who lived in Belfast, and um, as I was saying, I, I had seen the Belfast movie, and Kenneth Branagh's just slightly older than me, so, you know, I would have been about the same age as Buddy in the movie, you know, right. when I was visiting my cousins here, but, you know, going past barricades and sort of seeing, you know, how the town was being, or the city was being sort of, cordoned off as it were, you know, there was corrugated sheet and everyone I used to scare the living daylights out of me, you know, mm -hmm. it was so alien to where I was growing up in South Down where, you know, we had no sense of any of this at all. Mm -hmm. You know, life life seemed pretty normal. Um and I spent my school days down there. But I suppose like when I really first started to engage with Belfast was when I came here as a student in nineteen eighty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sort of came to Queen's University to study engineering and 
at that time, I was working at, at the weekends with um, a friend of mine as a sort of as a DJ in the Millbrook Lodge in Ballahinch. Right. And the guy who the guy who ran the discos in in the Millbrook Lodge also ran the nightclub in the in the top floor of the Euro Hotel, uh, which oh. was then known as the Copacabana Club. Wow. And it was the it was probably one of the few places that you really could go out in Belfast at the time. Uh-huh. You know, so if you were I mean you went to a pub in your local neighbourhood, you know, on the Ormer Road or Woodstock Road or Shankill Road or Falls Road or whatever, in terms of that like nighttime economy, like the nighttime economy didn't exist. Mm-hmm. Nighttime economy was pubs up around the university. Right. Um, so at night, I can I remember two nightclubs in Belfast, or two places you could go out at night. One was in the Europe Hotel, and the other was a club called the Celebrity Club, above what was CNS in the city centre. Um, and you needed to be really stuck for somewhere to go <laughs> to have gone to the Celebrity Club, because there were never, <laughs> There weren't too many celebrities around the celebrity club in those days, but so my memory of the Europa was probably spending as much time standing in Great Victoria Street on bomb scares. Or I was gonna say, you're going to the Europa, the very top floor of the Europa, while it's earning its reputation as the most bombed hotel. Yeah, well, so I was like, I, it was never bombed when I was in it, I have to say, <laughs> but like we spent an inordinate number of nights on the street, and quite often those would have been, you know, punters who turned up weren't allowed in weren't happy, phoned in a bomb scare, when everybody emptied out into Great Victoria Street, then they joined the mob and then made their way back in. <laughs> um, and in those days, the city centre was completely, it was a ring of steel. Yeah. You know, you get body search when you're going into the city centre, you get searched as you get into the shops, and mm-hmm. it was a really intimidating place. And the strange thing was, for us who lived here, that just seemed normal. Yeah. Um, but when, when you had a visitor come over, Yeah. From England, I, mean, I had an English girlfriend at the time, and I can remember the first time she came over, and she just could not believe what was what what she was experiencing going through those gates, going into Marks and Spencers, and people, you know, looking into her bag to see what was mm-hmm. in her bag, and we thought that was normal. It was, it was only then I thought like this: this is not normal. Yeah, it's not normal. And I went to live in Germany then shortly after that, and I suppose that drove it home for me just how you know how challenged at the time we all had growing up in those days. And do you think we did actually have any proper tourism, like tourism as we would call it now, back then? Or in those days. were people just so terrified that it was only really journalists and maybe people coming for the causeway but not really in the city? I mean, visitor numbers would have been incredibly low. You know, I mean, we would have graphs here in terms of charting out visitor numbers over the years and you can just see where everything fell off a cliff, you know, and, 1969, 1970, mm-hmm. um, and people who had been here would have been probably mostly f- coming on business, mm-hmm. or you know journalists who were here who were reporting on what was happening at the time. But there would be no real reason to come, you know, because we had no real hotel hotel stock, you know, bar one or two hotels. There was no restaurants worth talking about. You couldn't get into a bar in the city centre in the evening time. You could get in during the day, but you couldn't get in at night. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it, 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 the offer was not really what a tourist would have been looking for. So on that note, I would love to show you a video of your counterpart from from back in the day. Would you like to see it again, or do you remember? Yeah, no, no, you may as well show it again. Yeah. At the tourist board's headquarters in Belfast city centre, the chief executive spearheads a professional operation. He has an impressive staff of 60. Like them, he's ever optimistic. How would you describe Belfast today to someone who had never been here? Well, I think it's an interesting place if you want some excitement. But uh, quite frankly, it, one cannot in all honesty say that it's a very attractive place for obvious reasons. Look at all the jeeps and the army sculling around the place. Look at all the bomb damage. Uh, there's a great deal of damage and destruction around and it's not really, uh, I'm afraid to say, a great tourist centre at the moment. If someone, again, who hadn't been here before, asked you, is it safe to come to Northern Ireland, what would you say? Well, one says really that this is a matter of personal decision. People must make their own minds up. 
we cannot guarantee the safety of anybody any more than the Israeli tourist board can guarantee you won't tread on a landmine or the Italian tourist board can't guarantee you won't catch cholera or enteritis or, or the United States tourist board can't guarantee you won't get murdered or mugged in New York. I read last week that there are nine murders a day and a thousand muggings a day in New York. Well, I, I reckon we're better than that. So you're better off in Belfast than New York, are you? Oh, I would say so. You're less likely to be mugged. <laughs> um, the world's best, long way. The world's best seals, man. You know, your your job must be made a lot easier with with how everything is now. Oh, I can't compare the. You know, in fairness, I can't I can't imagine what it was like for someone to be in that job at, at, at that time. I mean, it was an impossible task. I at that time, well, not slightly later than that, but I mean, I worked for. IDB, what is now Invest in I, and mm -hmm. like I was in the job of trying to sell Northern Ireland as an investment location, mm -hmm. and like that was an incredibly difficult task at the time, really difficult task. Really? So I can't imagine what it was like trying to sell Northern Ireland as a tourism destination at that yeah. point. You know, this was really, it was really, really, really challenging. But um, and, you know, he, he said, you know, in that little video that I was, it was like it was, it was an interesting place if you wanted to come for an exciting time. I don't think that's changed. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's still a very interesting place, and if you want to come, you can have a really, you can have a really enjoyable and exciting time in Belfast when you yeah. get here. Um, not to be competitive, but when do you think Belfast will rival Dublin as being the number one city on the island, if ever? Well, I don't think. I mean, it's not. <clears throat> I don't think Belfast's ambition should be to rival Dublin. Um, you know, Belfast has, I mean, in many ways, Dublin can be a benefit to Belfast. I mean, if you think of Dublin Airport, mm -hmm. Dublin Airport's global connectivity is a benefit to us. Yeah. Because 75% of people who come from overseas and come to Northern Ireland to visit Northern Ireland and come to Belfast. 75% mm -hmm. of those people come via Dublin Airport. So yeah. the fact that we've got that connectivity with Dublin Airport works to our advantage. Mm -hmm. Dublin as a city is, in population terms, is five, six, seven times bigger than, yeah. than Belfast. But what Belfast needs to be, and I think is, is a really attractive second city on the island of Ireland. Absolutely. So if you're coming to Dublin, you have to come and see Belfast as well. Mm -hmm. And you feel, I haven't seen Ireland unless I've done Dublin and I've done Belfast. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think it should see itself as competing with Dublin. Um, and I don't think, you know, the powers of being in the city see, see that. it's it's. How does Belfast and Dublin work together to their mutual benefit? Yeah. And, and along that economic corridor. Yeah. Um, and I know the, the mayor of Dublin is going to be here in a couple of weeks' time to meet the mayor of Belfast to engage in those types of conversations. And yeah. I think that's a that's a positive a positive thing, and we, we can all only benefit from that. And just to finish, then, so the tourism of Ireland um, branding embrace a giant spirit. There are a lot of giants from Northern Ireland and from Belfast, um, personalities, um, whether that's in sport or, or any other arena. Why do you think we can, for such a small city, for such a small country, how do we produce so many giants? Um, and who, who do you like, who do you respect that's come from the city? Who do I like and who do I respect? Well, I mean, we've got lots of giants in, in, in a whole in a whole host of areas, you know, whether it be you know in the academic world or the sporting world, or cinema and TV. I mean, what has happened here with the, you know, the creative industries mm -hmm. and, and, and in terms of the screen industries over the last mm -hmm. decade or so has just been, it's just been phenomenal. Yeah. You know, uh, we've world class talent here now. Because world class talent, Game of like, you know, Game of Thrones, Derry Girls. Mm -hmm. um, line of duty, mm -hmm. you know, un unbelievable. What 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 we've had Belfast movie, yeah, uh, you know, which I thought was it's got mixed reviews, but I thought it was superb. Mm -hmm. It sort of brought me back to my childhood and sort of made me reflect on a lot of what's I don't know, how 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 I found Belfast over the last the last fifty years or so. I suppose one individual who stands out for me, and I'm a bit of a golf fan, would be would be Rory McIlroy, right, and. The reason I say that is, is like he's super talented. He's quite modest, in fairness to him. Mm -hmm. You know, I know he has to stand up and say, "I think I'm going to win this tournament next week." But <laughs> there's no point in him going into a tournament thinking he's going to get beaten. Yeah. Um, he's got huge appeal. I mean, he's really well. Like he is massive. 
in America. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, like you look at Sky or any of those, like even if he's number ten or twelve in the world, he is still the the image that's projected. Yeah. You know, onto onto our TV screens. Um, he's bright. He's articulate. And for me, you know, if somebody sort of said to me, pick a personality that sort of reflects the personality of Belfast or reflects the personality of Northern Ireland, I would say Rory McIlroy for that reason. Mm -hmm. You know, we're a young city. Bright, talented place, mm -hmm. um, ambitious. Feels comfortable, uh, uh, you know, in, in in the international, you know, in, on a global stage. Mm -hmm. Ambitious and likable. Yeah. You know, we talk about the giant spirit. It's as we say, what people like about this place is is the nature of the people. Mm -hmm. They find them engaging. They find them friendly, and they find them likable. And the one thing I think. That comes across from Rory Rackenboy for most people, ninety nine percent of people is he's incredibly likable. Yeah. And I think he reflects the new Northern Ireland for me. Mm hmm We'll have to get him on next. <laughs> he might be a little bit more expensive than me to get. <laughs> John McCrillan, thank you very much for thank taking you very part. Much, Dave, thank you. Thank you.